Hi everyone, Professor Barnhurst here with this week's wrap-up forum video for week two. For the final project, as, you, as you've already read, for the final project, you're going to create a sticky message that is addressed to a specific audience. And the goal of that message is to get your audience to do something, to act on your idea. So um, if you haven't read what the final project entails, please do so in the course information tab. It, it has the project and you can review the entire thing. In order to create this sticky message, you first have to identify the core, which is what we talked about last week. The core again is the intent or purpose of your message. Once you determine what the intent or the purpose of your message is, then you need to translate the core for your audience by using the success principles. And um, as we've seen, there are six. And once again, they are simple, unexpected, concrete, credible stories, and emotion. You don't have to use all six in your final in your um, message in the final project, but you probably would use at least three, two to three at least. Some people uh, manage to use more than that. Um, in this week's forum, we discussed the principles of concrete and unexpected. As we read, concrete helps the audience understand, remember, and apply the message. Sorry. Concrete is often an idea that will change your behavior, and it also creates what the text called a turf where we can collaborate. So concrete as a principle it creates a turf where we can collaborate, where we can get together and have a discussion because we understand the, the concreteness of it. Concrete as a principle also helps us from going down the path of, of abstraction, which is when the message has too much information in it to keep us interested and help us apply it. It doesn't give us enough, enough concrete information. Um, and we'll talk more about that as we go further into, into other units. In the form, a good concrete example, in my opinion, was the Juliana Bicycles website. And I think I talked about this last week and Letitia brought it up again this week. The core message for Juliana Bikes is the original women's bike. Now, that tells us exactly what the product is. It's a bike. It's for women and it happens to be the original woman's bike. Now that original part's not concrete, but that is the little piece that makes us go to that website and say, so what's so original about this? Isn't I, the Juliana bike can't be the only women's or the first woman's bike, but maybe there's something else about it that makes it original, possibly the design, possibly the structure, whatever. But the concreteness of it, um, allows for us to identify that turf where we can collaborate. The turf is, let's go to that website and see what this bicycle is about. <clears throat> the second principle we talked about is unexpected. The purpose of unexpected is to surprise us. And what's the purpose of a surprise? Well, in this case, the purpose of a surprise is to jolt us to attention, just like a surprise birthday party. We're go we go somewhere, we think we're having dinner with our family and Somebody, you open the door and people yell, surprise, you had no idea. It jolts you to attention. That's what an unexpected message does. The best example that I, that I like from the text is the example about from, from Nora Ephron, who is a very famous um, writer. Um, as a young writer in high school, she was given an assignment to write about an upcoming event. And they were given the facts, the five W's, the who, what, why, where and when. But what she realized that it's not enough to know about the facts. You have to understand what the point is, um, what the point of the story will be in order to get somebody to act upon it. So if you title the article, um, Speaking Event Thursday for All Eighth Graders, do you think the eighth graders are going to pick it up and read it <laughs> or any, you know, there's not a whole lot there that's going to make you pick that article up and read it. But if the point of your article to, in order to get them to do something is that the title becomes no school Thursday, I'll bet you every eighth grader in the class 
will read that and then try to find out why. Especially if as a journalist you put titles No School Thursday, but underneath you put and read further to find out why. People will definitely do that. So that's a really good way to um, jolt people to their attention and get them to do something, which in this case was read the article. Another good example that I thought came in the um, forum was um, Angelina, who did that website called Carry It For, I'm sorry, Bellroy. The website was called Bellroy. The name had nothing, the name was completely, it meant nothing to me. And if I were, um, unless I were searching something and stumble on it, I would never heard of Bellroy before. But the message said, the core message was, carrying it forward since 2010. So when you read that name and you saw that tagline, carrying it forward since 2010, it could be a number of things. Carrying what forward? Um, tradition? Um, somebody's family story? What could this possibly be? Bellroy sounds like a name. Maybe it is somebody's family story. But when you open the website, what do you find? Purses. What a clever way to say to people, carrying it forward to 2010. You don't work backwards with a purse, do you? You walk forward. So, and, and changing the style going forward in the future, that, that is a real unexpected message in my opinion. Okay, um, so these two principles, when used together to support an idea, to support your sticky message, uh, in this case, your idea or solution, makes your message more clear, meaningful, and measurable. So using the principles to support your core message makes your message more meaningful, clear, and memorable. And then of course, it gets you to do something. When you use unexpected, who forgets a surprise? Which one of us have ever forgot a surprise? So keep that in mind as we move forward and learn more about the next success principles. This week, we move on to the principle of credible. This is one of my favorite principles. I'm sort of a data person, and I, I kind of like to know that things are credible, especially in your forums. That you're just not making things up, that you've actually done your homework, you've done your research, and you do know what you're talking about. You'll see in our readings that there are five ways to make a message credible. And most importantly, you'll see that you must use your own ethos, which is your credibility as a presenter. You need to be you need to come off as a credible presenter. And how will you do that? Using one or more of the five ways that the text talks about. Um, it will show that you've done your research, that you can demonstrate that your idea will work or the changes you suggest will improve the business or make more money or whatever it is you, you have identified is the issue. Uh, make employees more satisfied at the job. But it's, uh, and, and, Incredible. The key is using your using your ethos to demonstrate your credibility and using one or more of these five ways to demonstrate that. The forum we have this week will address something called urban legends. And you're supposed to you will be identifying what makes these urban legends credible in your mind. Why did you recognize them? Why did you believe some of these as a kid growing up? Why do some people still believe these things? And why do they last so long? What makes them credible that Years and years have passed and people are still telling these urban legends. So uh, pay special attention to that and I think you'll enjoy the forum. Okay, so um, for this week's assignment, you'll do something called the audience analysis. And I wanna remind you that every week, the assignment that you have is just one stepping stone or building block to your towards your final project. So every week I, correct your assignments as early in the week as possible, usually by Tuesday evenings they're corrected. And I provide you with feedback that will help you in the creation of your final project, as, as does the assignment. So make sure you look at that feedback before you go on to the next assignment. Um, and then it'll make your final project, create. Um, you, you make the development of your final project much easier. So um, again, be sure to read my feedback for your assignments. Okay, so I know everybody's been having a rough couple of weeks. We, a lot of us are sheltering in place or uh, doing it voluntarily or not doing it voluntarily. So I hope you're all holding up well. I hope your kids and your families are holding up well and you actually have some time to do some fun things with your family. Um, and 
um, I, I appreciate everybody, all of your support in the forums and keeping up with your work. Because I know you've probably had a lot of juggling to do this week and changes. So I appreciate that. Um, I look forward to seeing you this, in this week's forum. And I'll be thinking about everybody as we're all going through this. I ask that you stay healthy. Wash your hands, like they say, <laughs> and um, if possible, stay in as much as possible till we get over this, and we will. It won't, it won't be as long as it sounds, but we will. All right, take care, everyone. I'll see you in the forum.